During the seven years that we spent sailing around the world, we used so many different apps and pieces of software just trying to make life that much easier. Today, I'm going to talk about one of my absolute favorites, OpenCPN. My name's David from Out Chasing Stars, and I'd like to invite you to sit back, relax, and let's talk boats. First off, for some of you who might be wondering just what OpenCPN is, let's do a quick little introduction. OpenCPN is a free, open source piece of software designed by cruisers, for cruisers, intended to be a alternative chart plotter and GPS navigational piece of software. And I hope you noticed the word free. It's absolutely incredible just how powerful this software is. It can do so many things that I would probably spend way more time than I should trying to go through even just the intermediate uh, information with you. So today, we're really just going to try to cover the basics, uh, how to download the software, some of the options that I like to change to customize the user experience just a little bit, downloading some charts, and then we'll do a very quick GPS uh, connection setup so you can start to get some idea of just what this software can do. Uh, if you guys are interested in some more information on like OpenCPN or other software and apps that we've used, uh, leave a comment down below so I can kind of get some ideas of what else you'd like for me to talk about. So let's go ahead and jump right in and download OpenCPN. We're going to go to OpenCPN.org. Pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, you can navigate around the website just a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and jump straight to the downloads page. And there are a few things here. First, we're going to start off and just go ahead and download the latest release. Click here on the current version. And one of the really cool things about OpenCPN is just how versatile it is. You can download for Windows, Mac, uh, Raspberry Pi, if you've got that kind of technical ability. Uh, I don't, so we're not going to do that today or even Linux. So there's a lot of options for being able to use the software. Today, I am on a Mac. So we're gonna go ahead and download for a Mac today. Download the file, just about 48.7 megabytes. So not that big when you have to download. While we've got things downloading, let's pop back to the OpenCPN website and explore just a few pieces of information I think will be really useful for you as you kind of get into the program itself. First up is going to be the manuals. Like I said, OpenCPN is a open source piece of software, which means that it's developed by developers and it can be a little rough around the edges. So having the manual to help kind of guide you through the setup and some of the more in-depth features will be extremely useful. Uh, there's a few different ways you can do it. They've got the PDF. You can even download it for like your Kindle. Uh, I like the wiki. It's just really easy to navigate. You can actually uh, you know, look at all the various options for getting started. Hopefully some of what we'll be covering today. So that'll be pretty straightforward. Uh, but even if you want to get on into the, some of the advanced features, terminology, all that kind of stuff, it's all right here. Definitely well worth taking a little bit of time to actually go through the manual. Now, there is another thing here. Let's go ahead and jump over to the resources tab. Uh, we're gonna talk about charts a little bit later, but charts, getting the charts for where you wanna go is definitely one of the trickiest parts of OpenCPN. So if you want kind of more insight for the various charts you can actually use, uh, this chart sources page will be a great place to get started. But what I wanna touch on right now is this OpenCPN forum. It is hosted through Cruisers Forum. If you haven't been on there, there's a lot of great information there as well. But this is a super active community of OpenCPN users. I mean, you can see there's 241 pages worth of threads. So if someone's had a question, it's likely been worked through here. Super useful. It could be worth spending some time, especially if you have a question, look in the user manual first. A lot of the frequently asked questions are addressed there. If you can't find it there, this uh, OpenCPN forum will likely have things covered, make life a little bit easier for you as you're adopting into the new software. 
Now, I think that's, uh, that's a pretty good little coverage here on the OpenCPN website. I'm, I think our download should be finished. Let's go ahead and open that up and get the software installed. To install the software here on my Mac, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the package that was downloaded. This is a little bit of a quirk of some of the newer operating systems for Macs. Um, it don't, they don't really seem to like apps that aren't downloaded through the actual Apple App Store. So this, this little pop-up can happen. Windows users, you likely won't see anything like this. I'm gonna click OK, come up to my system preferences, and then down here to security and privacy. And you can tell uh, it was blocked from use because it's not from an identified developer. Promise you, this is perfectly safe software. I'm gonna go ahead and open anyways. Click open again, because I am sure that I want to open it. And that brings us to the installer. I'm gonna go ahead, continue the license. You're welcome to read through on your own time. In the interest of time, I'm gonna go ahead and click continue and agree to the terms of the agreement. Installation location, I'm happy with where the default is, makes things a little bit easier to find. Uh, it should take about 100 megabytes of space. It's a pretty small piece of software actually with just how powerful it is. You can go ahead and install, asking for the password. Hope y'all are not watching. Install, let it do the configuration, writing, all those things, just a few seconds, and voila, installation successful. I'm gonna go ahead and move the installer to the trash since I won't need that anymore. Close out the security and privacy. And let's go ahead and open the program. On Windows, you should be able to go into your start menu and uh, find it that way. I'm gonna be a little lazy on my Mac and do command spacebar, bring up my spotlight, search for OpenCPN, and voila. Okay, I mentioned that this is open source software. A little rough around the edges. This OpenCPN error that's coming up is because it hasn't built a, uh, a directory that it needs, which this is the first time we've opened it. So there's the reason it hasn't built that directory. I'm gonna just go ahead and click OK. This is not a critical error. Um, everything will work after this. Now we've got kind of the, the default disclaimer. Pretty much every single piece of electronic navigation components that I've seen have something like this. Essentially, they want you to make sure that you're using this in conjunction with like paper charts. It's not your sole method of navigation and you still have to use traditional methods of navigation as well. It is important that you are always keeping an eye out. Never rely solely on your electronic chart plotter or paper charts. You still need to be keeping a careful watch, all those things. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay to agree and maximize our window here for OpenCPN. So this is the start of the program. If I zoom out, you can kind of see we've got a whole rough map of the world. And zooming in, oh, we're gonna go ahead and change some options first because there's a few things that I could do to make life just a little bit easier for navigating around. So let's go ahead and just jump straight up here to this options. First thing, display over on the left, zoom to cursor. Makes a lot more sense to me to actually, when I use the scroll wheel on my mouse, that it zooms in wherever the cursor is located. I guess that's personal preference. You're welcome to change that however you would like. The smooth panning and zooming, when you're moving around the various charts, it requires just a little more resources on your computer to try to make that smooth experience. Most laptops and stuff should be powerful enough to handle that. I'm gonna go ahead and click it. Uh, here you can change like your default boat speed, Star Horizons, eh, six knots is an okay assumption for now. We can click over into the units tab and here you can change the default like distance is measured in nautical miles, speed is gonna be in knots, depth, we'll go ahead and use meters. And you can even change your Latin long is uh, how it's presented to you as well if you'd like. One thing that uh, is worth noting that this screen right here in the units is where you can choose the bearings that OpenCPM will display to you. By default, it shows the true bearings and headings 
You can select two magnetic if you want to see those instead, or you can see both. I'm going to go ahead and click on both so we can just kind of keep an eye on everything and see how it compares. Let's see. The last couple things, the charts we're going to come back to, connections uh, we'll come back to later. Ships, I don't think I really need to do anything in here. That's going to be some more of the in-depth, more advanced stuff within OpenCPN, so not going to worry about that for the moment. The user interface. OpenCPN has been translated into, I think, like 20 different languages, which is just so incredibly useful for sailors all around the world. Uh, we're going to go ahead and stick with English. That's certainly the one I'm going to be most comfortable with. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. Now, as I scroll around, it's a little bit easier for me to navigate and figure out where we're at. Um, that was the basics of the options. There is one other area of options to take a very quick look at, and that's going to be down here on the bottom right. If I click these bars, this brings up the chart panel options. Uh, this will allow you to change your navigation mode. If you want to do north up, course up, heading up, etc. Um, display options, enable chart quilting. I do like leaving that checked because if you don't, it has a very hard time kind of overlaying charts together, especially for the, the electronic version of paper charts, also known as the RNC charts, which we'll come back to again a little bit later. Uh, here also, if you want to take a look at um, tides or currents, you can uh, activate those current and tide stations as well. So very useful. Some of that information, you want to know be able, where to be able to find that at a later point in time. Now, right now, as I film this, we are in the chest peak. And if I kind of zoom in on the chest peak, you can see that is not a lot of detail, not going to be super useful for actually navigating. Let's download some charts. In order to download charts, we're going to go back into the options window, come over here to charts. Probably should figure that one out pretty easily. And all the way on the right hand side here, they've got a very handy chart downloader. Uh, OpenCPN kind of works through catalogs. So we're going to do a new chart catalog and it brings up the charts that OpenCPN integrates with automatically. As I said, if you go to the resources part of the OpenCPN website, they have even more details of where you can find charts for places all around the world. But because we're trying to do this relatively quick and simple, I'm going to stick with the USA and the NOAA inland charts. Dropping down, you can see two different options down here, RNC and ENC. Uh, a very quick little primer on those. The RNC is going to be your raster navigational charts. Uh, these are the ones that basically like they take in electronic images of paper charts and they store all that information as pixels. Uh, it's um, kind of the dumb charts. Whatever information is on the paper chart is what you're going to see. The ENC, these are your electronic navigational charts. They're also known as vector charts. So you might see that um, wording somewhere else in OpenCPN. Just keep in mind that's the ENC. These are the smart charts. So you can click on different features uh, such as like, you know, a bridge and be able to see the height and stuff like that. Uh, it's it's takes a little bit of extra configuring, but can be very powerful. So let's go ahead and start off with some ENC charts. Going to go ahead and search by region. Down here, region four, all the Chesapeake and Delaware bays. You can specify which folder that you would like OpenCPN to download all these charts to. The default documents charts, again, pretty easy for me. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there. Click OK. Now, as I said, the catalog is kind of how OpenCPN organizes everything. You want to make sure that when you add the catalog that you make sure it is uh, pointing at the most recent and updated charts. So update the catalog. Uh, it now is looking at all the charts that were released as of today. So that's as new as it can get. We're going to go ahead and come now over to the download charts tab. Now here you could actually go through and select which areas of this region you want to download. I'm going to go ahead and just download all of them. You can see we've got 142 charts total. i um, got every single one of them checked by default. So I'm going to go ahead and just download the selected charts. The ENC charts that we're starting with, as I said, these are all kind of like translated electronic data, which means that they're going to be smaller file sizes. 
So even though it's 142 charts, it shouldn't take that long, but we're gonna go ahead and just skip right ahead till we're done downloading. All of our ENC charts are now downloaded. So let's go ahead and click OK, come back into the main OpenCPN screen. And you can see down here on the left that it's got a little bit of preparing the charts to do. So it takes a few seconds for it to kind of like get all the information uploaded into the program, everything downloaded. But as you can see, we actually have some chart information. So this is very exciting. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I know we are, where are we right now? Kind of down here around St. Michael's as I zoom on in, there we go. So this is roughly where we are right now. In a little bit, we'll add a GPS connection so that we can actually tell where Starry Horizons is located. But as you can kind of see, this is the basics of the ECN charts. Uh, I'm not gonna go too much more beyond this, but I will show you kind of what I was talking about. If I come up here um, to this William P. Lane Jr. Memorial Bridge, do a right click and do object query. This is where, because this is a smart chart, it actually will tell me some of the information for uh, these areas. It's very, very cool. Depending on where you click, you can actually get like height information and stuff like that. Um, well, I'm clicking in the wrong spot, but trust me, lots of information out there. Very, very cool to actually be able to look at. So now we've got our ECN charts. Let's go ahead and get some of our uh, RNC, I'm saying it backwards, ENC charts. We're getting now our RNC charts. We can do a very quick compare and just see some differences. So back into our options. I'm gonna go ahead back to our chart downloader, select catalog, come back into our add catalog, this time USA NOAA RNC, same by region, come to region four, same folder is gonna be fine. It'll create a new one for the RNC charts. I'm going to click OK, update this catalog again, come over to the Download Charts tab, and go ahead and get started downloading the selected charts. Now, as I mentioned, these are basically like scanned images of paper charts, which is going to be slightly higher file sizes. So even though it's only 59 charts, it might take just a little bit of time to download. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward to the end of this one. Now that all the RNC charts are downloaded, let's go ahead, click OK, come back into OpenCPN. Wait, as it adds all those charts. Now, the very observant of you will notice that down here, this is kind of your chart tab, and it's showing you all the various charts you have downloaded for the areas in which you're looking. All these green ones, these are gonna be the ENC charts. These blue ones, these are the new RNC charts. Let's go ahead, click on this one, and just kind of get an idea of the difference. If you've ever worked with paper charts before, this should be very familiar to you now. All this information is on what it looks like on the paper charts, basically. Like I said, they're just electronic conversions of the paper charts, or electronic images, not conversions. They're, that's the um, ENC. I want to make sure I'm getting this right. But so, for example, if I come down here, there is no ability to look for the information about an object. So the Chesapeake Channel fixed bridges, if the horizontal clearance and the vertical clearance is listed, that's what you're gonna get. Uh, you won't be able to interact with the chart at all. Also very important to note that depending on which part of the world you're in, you may change in two feet, which we now have. So don't all of a sudden assume that the Chesapeake has gone to 82 meters deep. That, that would definitely not be a good assumption. All right, so we now have got all kinds of charts for the Chesapeake, well covered and everything. Uh, I will kind of, I think, leave that at that point in time, uh, leave that there for all the charts and downloading, give you a little bit more opportunity to kind of explore the various charts on your own, but at least now you know how to download, and that's incredibly useful. The last thing that I, well, I may do one bonus, but the last big thing that I wanna to cover today is adding a GPS connection. There are several different ways to get GPS data into OpenCPN. Um, it is incredibly powerful and can actually integrate into various systems that you have on the boat. We have a Vesper Marine AIS and I can actually connect to its Wi-Fi and get information, GPS, AIS, et cetera, into here. But 
That's an advanced level course, and we're not covering that today. So if you want to see that, leave a comment, tell me down below, so I can put a video out on that someday. For today, we're going to go ahead and use this little guy. It is a GlobalSat BU353S4. It is essentially just a little GPS puck. And with this, I can plug it into the computer and open CPN. We'll be able to translate all that GPS data and start using it. Pretty fascinating. The only issue on my Mac is uh, I only have the Thunderbolt ports and this is the regular USB uh, connection. So I have to have a little dongle, but we're gonna go ahead and plug this in and see if we get lucky that the Mac is gonna recognize it. Okay, we are now plugged in and to come back and get this to recognize, I'm going to come back to my options page. We now are going to the connections tab. We're going to come down to the data connections area, add a connection. And this time it's a serial connection because it's plugged into the computer. Uh, I did get lucky. This is good. So uh, this again is one of those things. It's kind of the open source peeks its way through every once in a while. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense to a lot of people, but uh, I have tested. I do know that for the Mac, this USB serial 110, this is the uh, GPS puck that I just plugged in. Now, you may have to download some new drivers if you're on Windows or even on a Mac, if, depending on your operating system. If it's a bit older, you may need something to kind of like translate the GPS puck into the Mac. This is where the manual comes in for OpenCPN. They have detailed instructions for this uh, puck specifically for both Windows and Mac if you have any issues. So go check that out if this isn't popping up immediately. So everything else should be just fine. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and zoom out a little bit on the chart. And let's see if we can find where Starry Horizons is. A little hard to see this on this chart but there is now kind of a yellow crosshairs, and as, as I zoom in, there's Starry Horizons, anchored nice and safe outside of St. Michael's. All right, I think that's, that's pretty good. We now have a GPS. If we were moving, we would actually be able to track like the speed that we're going. It would be able to track an actual track, and so that's all incredibly useful information. I do want to just do a very, very quick comparison. We are now in the RNC charts, and this is why you always have to be keeping a very close eye out. You never want to rely 100% on either your chart plotter or OpenCPN, and good navigational skills are always important. I'm going to go ahead and click back over to this ENC chart. And as you look at this, we're now back in meters. It looks as though we're in less than a meter of water. We are not actually in less than a meter of water. We're perfectly uh, well deeply anchored. There is about 10 feet underneath us right now. So the charts as they get interpreted can be a little bit mm, questionable in terms of accuracy. Always give yourself a bit of a safety margin. Um, but just one thing to be aware of and why it is useful to look at both of the charts and kind of get an idea of you know, where things might be different. Now. That last little bonus I mentioned, let's touch on that one because this is just one of the coolest parts of OpenCPN that I use all the time. Trying to measure distances on your regular chart plotter uh, like that we have our Raymarine at the helm is kind of a pain in the ass. But on OpenCPN, it's so incredibly easy. Uh, I can do a right click with my mouse or hit the hotkey M and do a measure. So if I wanted to try to figure out how to get to, or how long it's gonna take us to get to Annapolis, I can start where Starry Horizons is, navigate our way roughly up this channel, come up around all these buoys, and we have to come all the way back around here into regular bay itself, scroll on up towards Annapolis, And there we go. If we wanted to try to get into roughly the main harbor of Annapolis, we're 26 miles away. It's super easy, super quick. And one other thing, if you notice in kind of that yellow box as I move the cursor around, 
you've got the two numbers. The one on the left, that's going to be your true heading for the section of the, the measurement that I'm currently moving around. And then you've also got your magnetic heading as well. And then that little number off to the top right is the distance of that little leg. It's so incredibly useful, so powerful. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the measure off. Come back down to where Starry Horizons is. Zoom in a little bit. And I think we're going to call that it. This has been a, a very, well, probably not quite as brief as you were hoping, but a, a relatively brief introduction into OpenCPN. You now know some of the basics, which means you can start to get dangerous. There's so much more that OpenCPN can do. Like I said, if you guys are interested in maybe having to learn, learning how to use some of like the plugins that are available, like super powerful, lots of options. I can share some of my favorites. I'll leave a comment down there below. If you want to see some more of the tips and tricks that I use OpenCPN for, we can cover that as well in a future video. But for now, I hope you have enjoyed kind of a, a quick introduction to OpenCPN. If you have not subscribed already, make sure you click up here to follow along as we put out more of these kind of videos talking about what we've learned over the seven years of our circumnavigation. And if you want to wait two weeks to see our next video, that's fine. But if you want to watch more in the meantime, click down here. We've got lots more videos you can watch. So thanks so much for following along. Hope you found this enjoyable. I will see y'all another day in another bay. Bye, guys.